Riverside Healthcare puts the health and wellness information you need well within reach. Hello, welcome to Health Currents. My name is Sean O'Connor and I am a marketing communications rep with Riverside Healthcare. And I'm joined today with Dr. Josh Miller, who is a MD and PhD, correct, Mm -hmm. in general orthopedics? Correct. All right, welcome. And today um, we're gonna be talking about arthritis and some kind of general science and uh, treatment options available. But first, let's get to uh, know you a little better. So give us kind of your background and what brings you to Riverside. Uh, My background is that I um, um, have been uh, working at the University of Michigan for the last uh, 20, 25 years, and I've been doing general orthopedics at the VA hospital there, um, seeing a fairly wide variety of uh, problems uh, relating to the shoulder and uh, hip and knee and some uh, ankle as well. And... um, uh, had a, a friend of mine tell me about a really great opportunity down here at Riverside, and I came down and met everybody and really loved it and saw a chance to um, do something great with building up uh, an orthopedic uh, program here and try to really provide great service to the community and uh, practice some good some good uh, general orthopedic care. Excellent. Well, that's great to hear. We're glad to have you. You and the entire team have just been Thank you. fantastic from the beginning. So. What um, brings us today uh, to discuss things is arthritis. And so kind of give us an idea of what arthritis is. So um, what what is it that really, what are patients feeling when they, when they have arthritis? That's a really good question. Arthritis is really when there's some degeneration within the joints itself. And the, the um, human joints are a remarkable um, structure. Uh, the, the bones that support our body weight and allow motion and, and function um, are uh, really amazing structures as well. Um, but they're loaded with uh, nerves. And um, if they are to rub against each other, it would be very, very painful. And so our body has uh, a cap basically on the ends of the bones. Um, and it's a very smooth, um, perfect white, shiny surface, like the white stuff on the end of a chicken bone. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I, I basically tell all my patients the same thing. So <laughs> yeah. it's maybe a little redundant. No, but but um, um, and it gives you a really good, smooth gliding joint. And that surface um, is called articular cartilage. And it is um, uh, very good at absorbing um, shock and loads, um, but it's very fragile. And um, when it's in good operating condition, um, it is also bathed in joint fluid um, that the lining of the joint produces. And it's really amazing, but um, uh, the two joint surfaces on each other with that thin cushion of a joint fluid in there is a thousand times slipperier than water on ice. Wow. It is incredible. A, it's an incredible, incredible um, surface. Um, it also has another uh, amazing property uh, called being thixotropic, which is at very low speeds. It's very thick, like a, like a heavy motor oil, and it's very cushioning. So if you're doing like really heavy heavy lifting, it really spreads the loads out uh, across the joint and really protects. Um, Whereas if you're moving, like running at high speeds, it becomes very thin and um, um, very much less viscous so that it has very little resistance and can allow the joint to move really, really quickly. Unfortunately, over time, the joint can deteriorate, um, and this can happen um, naturally, you know, really in in everybody as we get older, um, and that um, cartilage surface can start to break down a little bit, and that's really what we call arthritis. Um, Now, another amazing thing about that articular cartilage on the end of the bone is that it doesn't have any nerve endings, and so it can take pretty heavy load and not cause pain. When it gets damaged, it still probably is not the source of pain, but it fragments and little fragments from the cartilage can float out and get lodged in the lining of the joint. Oh, wow. And that can cause irritation of the lining joint, which generally causes it to produce more fluid. And therefore, we get the swelling uh, in the joint. And it, uh, it also creates a lot of inflammation and inflammation causes pain. It generally, arthritis pain is generally a kind of a dull 
achy, throbbing. It's like your world's worst toothache. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very nagging pain. Um, it um, is often worst in the morning when you get up, but as you start moving around, it kind of loosens up and it, and it gets better as you go. That fluid gets moving, the joint gets left stiff. Um, the pain is actually usually a little bit better, um, but over time, as you're starting to put a lot of uh, wear on it, a lot of pressure on it, uh, the pain usually will get back. So it, in early arthritis, it's it's getting bad sort of towards the end of the day. Mm -hmm. As the joint wears down, the arthritis becomes more pronounced, and then it can become painful, you know, pretty much all the time. And when our patients are really, really struggling with it, it can be, you know, every step. Um, and um, um, so it can become very, very problematic for people you know, as, 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 it, as it progresses. So what are some common joints? Obviously, some joints are more susceptible to arthritis than others. What do we see? Yeah, I think really um, all of the joints are susceptible to it. Um, I, I think we see hip and knee probably um, the most, but certainly the shoulder um, is very susceptible to it. Um, our hand surgeon, Dr. Crawford, I think probably sees a lot of arthritis in the small joints in the hand and also uh, in the wrist. It can be a big problem. Um, we think about it less in the elbow, but it is definitely a condition that can concur, occur in the elbow as well. I interestingly, in the foot, there are uh, a number of joints that don't have a lot of motion in them naturally, mm -hmm. and other bone joints in the foot have a lot of motion, and those are the ones where we're more worried about the arthritis okay. because the joints that normally don't have a lot of motion, they can get arthritic, but they're already pretty stiff, and we tend to see less issues with pain there. Gotcha. Yeah. How does that old adage, is it is it a true adage that weather can affect symptoms or is it is it just kind of a misnomer that weather, you know, though? People seem to really notice that, you know, when the weather's changing or when it's when it's going to change. And I don't know why that happens, but uh, it's 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 for sure. Um, I think people's um, arthritis is even worse in the cold mm -hmm. in general. So in the winter, and I know some people really have a hard time in the winter, and then things get better. Okay. You know, as the as the weather warms up, and and so they can they can they can tolerate living with that joint for a little bit longer. So as far as um, with the spring warming up, is it better to get it taken care of, even though it's not nagging as much now in the spring? Or is it something that if you can tolerate, you should go ahead and just keep going with it until it becomes a real pro problem for you? Yeah, great question. And I think it's very patient dependent, you know, how they sort of feel about uh, how they can manage with it or maybe even kind of what sort of uh, plans and activities they have um, uh, coming up. You know, just a little bit about the natural history of arthritis. It's, it's something that, you know, um, when the damage is done and our best way of detecting that is a uh, is an x-ray, a regular old x-ray. Um, and once we see arthritis there, even if it's mild or moderate or more severe, you know, it just tells us that that's what the diagnosis is. It doesn't really tell us uh, what the patient's feeling, you know, and it, that, that level of pain that they're having, you know, you're going to have your good days, you're going to have your bad days. Over time, um, sometimes it kind of gets better for a while, it'll get worse, it'll get better. So it can be sort of an undulating uh, pattern. It doesn't generally go away. And sometimes over time it will worsen, you know, uh, it, that can happen suddenly or it can just be very, very steady. So, so we don't really have a good way to tell people, how is this going to affect you over the next three months, mm -hmm. over, the, over the next six months? But for, for many of the joints, uh, well, for really all arthritis, you know, we've got good medications. So you just your over-the-counter anti-inflammatory type medicines have a profound effect because, like we said, it's, it's arthritis. Arthro means joint. Itis means um, inflammation. Mm -hmm. And it probably is a lot of inflammation in the joint that's causing the pain. And so those anti-inflammatory medicines can, can make a... A, a really big difference for people. Tylenol is also really effective. Um, then there are a lot of more of your nutraceutical kinds of things like glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate where, you know, the, the evidence isn't as good for those, but, I, you know, I see a lot of people that get some relief from that. So so those things are, are really helpful. Um, in a lot of joints, physical therapy can be really helpful. And a really key example is the knee joint. There's many, many studies that show if we do a good low impact um, arthritis 
program, which basically is get the leg strong in a way that doesn't make it hurt, it can make a tremendous difference. You know, there's bracing, injections can be um, um, very useful. So all of those things are uh, things that can just be done at any time. And so, so if somebody's you know getting ready for the you know the warmer weather and being more active, um, I would say hey, you know what if you're if you're feeling it less then let's just see how it goes. Um, but if they said, well, I've got a big event coming up or I, you know, I really like a certain activity and, I, and I'm having trouble doing that, then we can see what, what sort of things haven't been tried and, and try to do those things um, uh, that they think that they have the time for and um, will work well into their, into their schedule to try to not hold them back too much. I think you might have been referring to, you know, treatment like an operation. Um, those things, I think, really need to be thought about long and hard. And um, um, because many of them are, are fairly predictable, but there are bad things that can happen. And those can really change the course, you know, of what's going to happen. So if somebody has a big event coming up and they're like, I really need to be able to do this and I need some pain relief for that. Surgery isn't necessarily yeah. a great way to go because if they have a problem, they may not be able to make that yeah. event. Whereas if we try an injection or something like that, that might get them through. It might get them by until they're at a point where you know they can they can see a surgical thing through its entire course. And and I think that's a, a very good point is that you and the rest of the team have always tried to take a conservative approach towards medicine first before we go to those those extremes right out the gate. And so we exhaust all our other resources first before we start to look at kind of last case scenario. So I, I, I think, think we all a, have a pretty similar philosophy yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. that's very, very important. So obviously, if someone is experiencing uh, symptoms, they should see Riverside Orthopedic Specialists or talk to their primary care provider before starting any type of regimen of treatment. Um, but as always, fantastic. Glad to have you here. Glad we could get your insight for, for some great thoughts on arthritis. Um, no bones about it. <laughs> uh, fantastic job. And uh, we hope to have you on another time. So thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. My pleasure.